Live from Gulfstream Park in South Florida, this is a special edition of Racing Across America with Seth Merrow. and welcome to Racing Across America, the on-the-road version. We are live uh, just outside the paddock here at Gulfstream Park. Again, thanks to the folks at Gulfstream for their hospitality and their sponsorship. Gulfstream Park champions start here. All right, it's a full show, so why don't we jump uh, right into it. During the show today, we were at Palm Meadows yesterday and uh, grabbed some interviews a little later on. Jason Service, he, of course, has maximum security in the uh, Florida Derby. Rob Landry, they have Nipawa, the uh, winner of the Breeders' Stakes up at Woodbine last year, but we run into Rob a lot when we head up to, to Woodbine, so uh, we saw him out by the track at Palm Meadows yesterday, pulled him over to talk a little bit about uh, their situation. Chad Brown, also coming up later in the show. As far as the taped interviews live here on the set, we'll be joined by the GM here at Gulfstream, Bill Badgett, and also Mark Hennig will uh, jump on board as well. He has Bourbon War in the Florida Derby. So a big show lined up, and why don't we kick it off with Kieran. We talked to him a little bit about Heichel and uh, the sibling to Tackle, Tackleful. And uh, as you can see, I stumbled over the name again. I had a little trouble <laughs> with both of those names during the interview yesterday. Heichel Tackleful. There you go. I have them both uh, down. But we talked about Heichel. Uh, he's going to the wood next week, and so we got a little update on that. But tomorrow's action, Kieran actually has a horse at uh, Dubai in the Godolphin Mile, True Timber. So with uh, Dubai action tomorrow, I thought we'd get a little update there as well. So up next, Karen McLaughlin. Unbelievable. I mean, we're on it every day, keeping track of all dates, whether it's, you know, vaccinations, shoeing dates, um, teeth dates, everything, and race dates, and uh, Coggins, everything. It's amazing. We use Telor, which is great, um, and we, we all are on it. So it doesn't matter where you are. Neil's in Dubai right now, and he can be on it, and we're on it here in Florida, New York, everywhere. It goes with our iPad. Yeah, it certainly has changed everybody's uh, way of working. All right, let's hit on a couple of horses. Uh, Saturday afternoon uh, in Dubai, True Timber in the Godolphin Mile. Nice second last year in the Cigar Mile behind Pattern Recognition. How long has he been in Dubai? How's he working? He left on the 19th and basically did all of his works here, and he's just been galloping there, but he loves the track, and he shipped well. That's the most important thing. Drew post 3 of 13, and uh, Joel Rosario rides, so he should run very well. And uh, I've been watching Twitter and Twitter feeds and just looking at the video. Again, technology looks like he's taken to the track. Yeah, exactly. And I've been able to see the same <laughs> thing with Neil over there taping him every day. So he's doing great. Neat horse does everything right. So we're excited about him. All right, Phyllis. And also, we're headed down next week to the Wood Memorial. Heichel will be there. Uh, and I'll tell you, he's dear, near and dear to my heart because I have to tackle full. And I did a, a, a promotion for Capital OTB a couple of years ago where I had a bankroll to play for a bunch of people in the parlor. And I was not doing well until I laid it on tackle full in the career debut at 12 to 1. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm a, a big fan of tackle full. Tackle full. Tackleful, uh, Heichel, a half to that one, coming in off a couple of stakes wins, the Winkfield and the Gotham. How's he come into the wood, and how's the stretch out? What's your anticipation on the distance? Well, the distance, you know, we were a little bit concerned about because of his brother was a pure sprinter, but he has a great mind. He's a different horse, and he stands over more ground, and the distance should not be a problem, and I'll be up there, too, for the wood, and uh, we think he'll get two turns, as does Rajiv. So we obviously won't have a 44 half to run into, but we'll be closer going two turns most likely. And you were looking before we came on the air. Uh, he's just out of work? He's going to work tomorrow morning, okay. most likely at 940 after the second break. Okay. We're taping on Thursday, so he's going to be out on Friday morning. Yeah. Uh, and I was just reading a little bit about him, and it was kind of interesting because of the success of Tackleful. Tackleful. Uh, Heichel was aimed for Europe, potentially, but you made a call and uh, got him back on the dirt here. Talk a little bit about that. 
Yeah, Rick Nichols actually did it. We were talking, and I liked him as a yearling. I saw him in September, and then when I asked Rick, he said, oh, he's down to go to Europe. And I said, oh, shoot, or Dubai. So I said, once Takafa won the grade one, I asked Rick if he could maybe get him out of quarantine. And he called Sheikh Hamdan, and he agreed to taking him out of quarantine. So it's a good story <laughs> that we've won, you know, graded stakes with him now and hope we have a bright future. Here's Instagram on the outside. Here's Mind Control down at the rail. Three of them across the track with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Mind Control down at the rail. Instagram on the outside. Much better is in between those two. The three of them continue to battle it out. And here's Haikal making a late run on the extreme outside. They come for the finish. It is Haikal to win the Gotham. Haikal from way out of it takes the Gotham stakes. Good luck uh, with True Timber in Dubai. Good luck with Hack, uh, Haeckel in the uh, Haeckel, 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 right? High call, high call, high call. Uh, very good. Thank you. And uh, in the wood. And before I let you go, I've been asking uh, trainers, because people have asked me the past couple of months, I'll be out and they recognize me from, from TV, and, and they say, what do, you, what do you think of the Saratoga dates, the new dates, the 40, still 40 days, but it's a little longer. There are uh, no racing Mondays and Tuesdays. I'm kind of up in the air. I don't know which way to go, but as a trainer, do you have a feeling one way or the other? No, we work seven days a week, us <laughs> trainers. So it actually, I feel like it's a plus for all the employees, whether they're on the backside or the front side. It's hard to go six days a week. And Steve Asprey used to kid me, I can't get my hair because I don't have time. So um, we need an extra day off. And uh, it, it, it's a little bit hard on everybody for rent. It'll be an extra week or two for rent. But luckily, we bought a place up there 10 years ago, and a lot of our help are already there all summer. So that'll work out fine. Very good, Karen. Again, uh, good luck on the weekend. Thank you very much. Heichel Tackleful. See, I can say that they're laughing off that uh, Mick was up at Pound Miles with me. I could not. Although I also think it's Tackleful. Uh, I've heard both pronunciations, but I can say that as well. But yesterday I was, <laughs> was having a little trouble. But thanks to Karen. Uh, certainly enjoyed talking with him. And good luck uh, tomorrow. Uh, True Timber in the Godolphin Mile. Jason Service also caught up with him up at Palmetto's. He has maximum security in the Florida Derby. Uh, started the career for a $16,000 tag. Now in the fourth career start, goes into the Florida Derby off a 102 buyer victory. And there aren't too many triple-digit buyers this year for the three-year-old. So uh, fun talking with him about maximum security. Also got updates on a couple other horses. Call Paul in World of Trouble. Jason Service, up next. Joined now by Jason Service, maximum security in the uh, the big race on Saturday, three for three so far. The first thing I have to ask you, the uh, debut win, it was a maiden claimer for 16. What was going on there? I'm taking a lot of heat for that one, geez. Uh, I mean, I really didn't think I'd lose the horse, you know. He was, he was a homebred. I had the bug on him. I just really I thought I'd be okay, you know, but I, and I thought he'd win that day. Free square. What would you say? Free square. Yeah, free square, so... <laughs> Oh, I didn't think he was a derby horse, but Florida derby horse, but anyway. Well, three for three now, and the optional claim were last time. I'm a buyer's guy. Fired a 102, so what are your thoughts going into Saturday? I would like to see him win by half that margin, run maybe a 90, and to Saturday go to 102. But he's three for three on the track. Louis Sai is rising. He's winning everything, so we got a few pluses. No, there's not a lot of downside to giving it a whirl. How's he training? He's training okay. Just okay, yeah. And and he's obviously based up here at Palm Meadows. He's at Palm Meadows, yeah. You know he hasn't he hasn't really hooked much, so we don't know. You know he's I handpicked a couple of soft spots for him, so we'll see Saturday. Okay. But at the three sixteenths, maximum security making one to nine look like easy money. He's leveling off powerfully. Let's just look at him go. It's all maximum security in a powerhouse run. Maximum security by fifteen. First and three, second. War Bridle, third. Wanted to catch up with a couple other horses. Okay. Uh, we're up in Saratoga, obviously, so we saw Call Paul win the Saratoga special, won the Swale. I saw you had a workout the other day. What's coming up next for Call Paul? Call Paul's going to get on a plane Wednesday and fly to my barn at Belmont to run in uh, Bayshore Wood Day. 
and World of Troubles getting on the plane with him. I'm gonna run in the Carter. And I may send a horse up for the wood that day, a horse called Final Jeopardy that won a one other than at Gulf Street. Very good. I was going to ask you about World of Trouble because we talked to you on, on Pegasus Day after they had the off the turfer. You have all kinds of options with that horse. Oh, my God. He's, you know, I see Roy H. come up with a, a foot bruise. And, you know, you're always thinking, geez, maybe I should have been in the dirt in Dubai. But uh, he's, he's training pretty good, actually. So we'll see how it goes. Got, right. still got a lot. We got to get on the plane, get on the van, and see what happens. But we'll see how it goes. World of Trouble set down for the drive by Irad Ortiz Jr. and moving away. Recruiting Ready is back to second, then Sing and Cry in Dubai with Bell Tapasseri. But this is a world class effort from a world class sprinter. It's all World of Trouble. Stay tuned after the break. Uh, again, we caught up with Chad Brown yesterday up at Palm Meadows as well. That's coming up and live here on the set. Bill Badgett and Mark Hennig. All of that right after this. Stay tuned. It may be cold in the Northeast, but in South Florida, the action's hot. This winter, be part of the championship meet at Gulfstream Park, where the fields are deep and the payouts are big. With some of the most competitive turf racing in America, Gulfstream Park is your winter destination for the finest in championship thoroughbred horse racing. And if you're looking for the top jockeys and best trainers, you'll find them all at Gulfstream Park. So play it today. Gulfstream Park. Champions start here. Here in upstate New York, no one provides bettors with more wagering options than Capital OTB. Our network of ranch and easy bet locations stretches from the mid-Hudson Valley all the way to the Canadian border and west to central New York. So whether you need to place a bet, fund your Capital Bets account, or watch the next big race, all the action is just around the corner. A full list of our branch and easy bet locations can be found online at CapitalOTB.com. Capital OTB, the better and most convenient choice for wagering in upstate New York. No matter where in the world you are, the excitement of wagering on horse racing is just a click away. You'll get live streaming, past performances, race replays, our virtual tote board, analysis and selections from professional handicappers, a simple, safe, and secure wagering platform, and best of all, you get track prices. CapitalOTBBet.com. Bet any place, anytime at CapitalOTBBet.com. And be sure to download our new mobile app from the iTunes Store or Google Play. Welcome back to Racing Across America, live from Gulfstream Park. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, we kick things off at 8 o'clock with the Handicapper Support. This show, Racing Across America, at 8.30. Mark that on your uh, calendar for tomorrow. Let's jump back into the action. Again, up at Palm Meadows yesterday, standing next to the fence, watching some of his horses go by Rob Landry. Chiefswood Stable, we usually run into uh, Rob up at Woodbine, although they tend to bring some horses down to Saratoga as well, and we've seen them there. They have Nipawat uh, in Saturday's Race 12. It's an optional claimer, but don't forget, that's part of the rainbow, so I thought we'd get some thoughts on Nipawat and uh, the seasonal debut for that one. Won the 2018 Breeders' Stakes uh, last year up at Woodbine. That's the third leg of their Canadian Triple Crown. Trained by Mark Cassie, so it gave Mark a, a Triple Crown. He won the first two legs with Wonder Gadot and then the third leg with Nipua. So we got a little catch-up on Nipua and more. Rob Landry is up next. All right, we're joined now by our friend Rob Landry from Chiefswood Stable. Uh, seem to run into you every place we go, but here you are, Palm Meadows, uh, getting ready for the weekend. And let's just check on uh, Nipawa. Won the uh, Breeder Stakes last year. Third leg of the Canadian Triple Crown, right? Yeah. 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 Won that for Mark Cassie. Comes back, makes the seasonal debut in an uh, optional claimer on uh, the big card Saturday at Gulfstream Race 12. How's he coming into the race? He's coming into the race well. Mark's, uh, we had him at... Uh in a, at his farm in Ocala, his training center in Ocala, and he shipped here about a month ago. And um, you know he's been he's been doing uh, things well. We gave him a little bit of time after his last race, and uh, just to grow up. And uh, you know this is a good place to start back. Last couple of races of the season, a couple of stakes races, including that Breeder Stakes, they were both a mile and a half. The sa uh, Saturday races at a mile, just kind of getting ready and started for the season. Yeah, I mean that's where the race was, and he. Uh, you know, he won at that distance on Pegasus Day last year, so, you know, it just seemed like the right spot to get him started. You know, uh, we think he's got a lot of talent, does probably want to run further, but, you know, I mean, obviously it's uh, a good starting point. Turning in front is Nipawa. Nipawa in the Breeder Stakes, tackled by Eskaminza on the inside. Say the word at Flight Deck, but Nipawa is not surrendering. Hot cap. 
Fresh is starting a run well behind. It's still Nibiru. They come to the final ball. Nibiru, three in front. Say the word in second. And then it's Gamins and Flight Deck and Hot Cash. And it is the Mark Cassie Nibiru. And a Mark Cassie triple crown. Nibiru wins. Gate away. Second, say the word. Third is Flight Deck. It's Gamins and four. And then Hot Cash. Chiefswood Stable, finalist for the Sovereign Awards, which essentially get announced what, like on the eve of the, the Woodbine meet, right? Yeah, it's, uh, the Sovereign Awards are on the 18th of April. And, and uh, Woodbine opening up uh, right in that period as well. Chiefswood based up there. Obviously, you're down at Palmetto's. We were talking beforehand. You got a little stop over at Keeneland maybe, but give us the setup as, get, as far as getting ready for the Woodbine season. Well, you know, we have horses in up there already. I mean, our... our um, whole goal is to be competitive in big races in the U.S. So, you know, we're trying to, you know, we, we have a great breeding organ or operation and, you know, we're trying to get the best mares we can to breed them to the best stallions and, you know, hopefully produce a Kentucky Derby winner one day. You looking forward to uh, the two turf courses up there, Woodbine? Yeah, we are. I mean, I'm a big fan of dirt. Unfortunately, we don't have it up there, um, you know, but we do have a lot of nice turf horses. But uh, again, um, you know, we're probably going to run a lot more horses in the U.S. We're hoping that we have enough that are good enough to compete down here. But uh, I'm a big uh, dirt fan, so um, that's I'm a traditionist. So. Well, we're, we're headed up uh, for Queen's Play weekend again this year, so we'll probably see it up there. But uh, we've certainly seen you a couple of times on Saratoga, so looking forward to that as well. Yeah, great. Thanks very much. Rob Landry. As always, part of our annual Florida Derby weekend visit to Palm Meadows included, included a stop by uh, Chad Brown's barn. He has Dunbar Road entered in the Gulfstream Park Oaks, but also considering the gazelle with that one. So we'll see uh, which uh, race is picked, but also positive skew in the Sanibel Island focus group in the Pan Am. We also caught up and, and got some updates. Brick and Mortar, who won last week, the gutsy race down at Fairgrounds. And a really promising three-year-old filly for uh, Chad called Feedback. So Chad Brown coming up. Talking to Chad Brown, he's got some runners in on Saturday. Went ahead on a couple others maybe in the future as well, but let's start out with some of the Saturday runners. Dunbar Road, pretty good looking maiden debut winner. Uh, now comes into the Gulfstream Park Oaks, tries two turns. Your thoughts on Dunbar Road? Well, she's been doing really well. Obviously her debut is as good as we could have asked for. And uh, I wasn't really originally, originally planning on running here, but uh, I took a look at the field and not having the ship, I decided to take a look and it appears I'm leaning towards running here versus the gazelle. Off the turn and the stretch drive, Dunbar Road with an impressive turn of speed is now kicked clear to four length in front. From the outside, Hightailing is trying to get into second. She's now into second, but nobody's getting to Dunbar Road. Dunbar Road levels off nicely. Here's a flashy debut win for her. Dunbar Road, easy. She won by six or seven. Uh, you also have in the uh, Sanibel Island po positive skew for Klarovich. I love the Klarovich names. Yeah, that's a good name. What a typical Seth name. And, uh, you know, it's a really nice filly. Another one we always thought a lot of. And she broke her maiden earlier in the meet in good fashion. And, uh, I think she's good enough to step right into a stake. Yeah, as a buyer guy, she probably has to step it up a little bit. The lightly raced, there's still probably some upside potential. Yeah, I think she has a lot of room for improvement. I think uh, I like the gradual stretch out for her to a mile, and uh, we'll see how she does. There's an eighth of a mile to go, and positive skew under very confident Castellano handling has now made the lead and moves away by three. Here's a big late run from take ten up into second. Positive skew will win it. The big favorite gets the job done in handy fashion. Positive skew from take ten. Ten second. In the Pan American Focus Group, uh, three for five last year, comes off a third in the Canadian International last October, but went off a long layoff last year uh, at about this time. That has to give you a little confidence. Yeah, it's a long way to go. It's a tough field, um, but it's a starting point for the for the season. So, well, you know, he drew a good post, and hopefully he gets a good trip. We know he has a good late closing kick. Let's uh, look to the future a little bit. And first up, uh, let's talk Brooks and Mortar, who looked great last week. Had to really work for it. But the long shot put in a, what, three quarters in 115. So was legitimately had something left in the stretch. And so for Brooks and Mortar to fight like that, what was your takeaway from the uh, race last week at Fairgrounds? Yeah, I was proud of him. He's out of his out of his game there. You know, at the slow pace, laying close like that. It's not really what he wants to do. But he, uh, you know, he showed his class and he was giving a lot of weight away, uh, carrying 125. 
And uh, yeah, I was very proud of his effort. Any game plan coming up for him? Yeah, we're going to run in the old Forster on uh, Derby Day. And, uh, so we're looking forward to that. Bricks and mortar now charging hard. And toward the inside is Hot Springs looking to battle through. Synchrony, Divisadero, and Inspector Lindley. They come past the 16th. And it's Bricks and mortar. And Mark it off is not going down without a fight. It's Mark it off. Mark it off and Bricks and mortar. Bobber. Bricks and mortar dived out of the fairgrounds wire with Mark Adolf, who was a stubborn foe. Uh, Precious, a European import, has had a couple of starts here. Uh, second in the Della Rose up at Saratoga and then came back uh, for the seasonal debut in the Honey Fox. What's up next for Precious? Uh, Distaff Turf Mile, again on Derby Day. So we're looking forward to that. She's been training well since her win. And finally, I when I do the handicapping show uh, on Capital OTB TV, I love the violence runners. They're so precocious, and feedback for Klarovich uh, just has looked so good so far. Nice little three-year-old filly. Saratoga made in special weight, went right from that into the forward gal uh, back in February. What's up next for feedback? Uh, probably going to run the Ashland, uh, so she'll have her final work here this weekend and then send her off to Keeneland, and we'll see if she can get two turns. And do you agree with me about the violence runners? Yeah, no, they look... Excuse me, very solid and precocious, like you said, and they, they run on both surfaces, yeah. really. Feedback has the lead. Bye bye, Jay. Up on the outside, tries to challenge from second. Down the center in Jeltron. Up the inside in Champagne, anyone? Eighth of a mile to go. I read Ortiz Jr. pleading for more from feedback. She still has the lead. Bye bye, Jay. Takes another run on the outside. They come to the wire. It's still feedback in front, and feedback guts it up. Feedback turned away by by Jay with Champagne anyone and Jeltron in 123 and 2. Uh, before I let you go, I've been asking some of the trainers um, because I've been asked the past couple of months, and I don't really have an opinion. I'm taking a wait-and-see attitude, but as a trainer, what are your thoughts on the new, uh, the, uh, the new schedule at Saratoga? Still 40 days, but no Mondays and Tuesdays. Any positive or negative thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a, a, a positive thing uh I, I will see how it goes I, i'm taking a wait and see approach any any time i get to spend more time in saratoga is good <laughs> for me personally um you know the two days off business wise I, i'm not sure how that's going to affect everything but we'll see but right now i'm taking a positive view on it very good good luck on the weekend thank you thanks to chad brown and uh everybody up at palmettos who Gave us a little time, Kieran and the Jason Service, Rob and Landry, uh, appreciate their time and always enjoy our time up at Palm Meadows. Uh, really a nice facility. It's maybe, well, yesterday it took us about an hour because uh, we were up there kind of in the midst of rush hour traffic, but usually it's yeah, maybe 40, 45 minutes up from uh, the racetrack. Uh, but it, very tranquil. Uh, the horses must love it up there. Um, great facility and just run into a lot of familiar faces. All right, before we go to a break, let me uh, just hit on some of the promos coming up because it's a it's a big weekend and do want to alert you again today, Friday, the uh, mandatory payout of the bounty bet over $1,600 up for grabs. And uh, it is on the late pick four right here at Gulfstream. So again, keep that in mind, play the late pick four at Gulfstream with your capital OTB bet account and you're in, that's all you have to do. Play it through your capital OTB bet account and you're in for a shot at the uh, bounty $1,600 plus a mandatory payout this afternoon, Friday, uh, capital OTB. Also, uh, programming note, obviously you're tuned in today, so uh, you know uh, the Friday programming, but the Saturday programming tomorrow will start at 8 a.m. Saturday, 8 a.m., handicapper support, 8 to 8.30. 8.30 to 9.30 is racing across America. And again, uh, have some nice interviews scheduled for uh, tomorrow as well. I've mentioned it on the handicapper support. I'll toss it in again. They had the sale here, the two-year-old sale here. Uh, on Wednesday, basic Tipton sale, and we shot some vi uh, video here. Uh, lots of lots of the number of seven-figure horses, but one went for 3.65 million. So it was a nice sale. Uh, caught up with Bob Baffert, and we had an interview with him. Uh, we talked to Terry Finley because West Point certainly, certainly participates in the uh, two-year-old sales, and also talked to some of the basic uh, Tipton representatives, including President. <laughs> Sunday, a little piece on that two-year-old sale uh, that'll include the interview with uh, Bob Baffert. Also talked a little bit to Bob about uh, some of his three-year-olds as well. So that's coming up on Sunday. But again, racing across America tomorrow. Ken McPeak, we talked to him yesterday. Um, and uh, 
we'll, we'll, we're going to grab some more interviews uh, this afternoon. So should be a good uh, racing across America tomorrow, Saturday, again, at 8.30 a.m. Handicappers report at 8. All right, we'll head to a break. When we come back, there he is. He's headed on his way here, the GM here at Gulfstream Park, Bill Badgett. Stay tuned. That's up next. You have just witnessed a felony. Visit Rivers Casino and Resort, the Capital Region's only destination for live table game action and the hottest new slots paying out millions. And they're off. Horse betting is now at Rivers Casino and Resort with Capital Off-Track betting terminals and live tellers located just off the gaming floor at Van Slicks. Get in on all the action at Rivers Casino and Resort. Runs at him with one furlong to run. They've left flat out behind. Fort Larned digs in. Mucho Macho Man runs at him. Fort Larned, Mucho Macho Man. Fort Larned with the heart of a champion. In a recent study of some of the top online wagering sites, Capital OTB won big in total player rewards, far surpassing some of the best-known wagering sites in America. While other rewards programs simply offer you points redeemable for gift cards, Capital OTB's rebates are paid to you in actual cash. Plus, Capital OTB gives you full and immediate access to your money. So if all you're getting now are points and gift cards, join Capital OTB Player Rewards today and get cash back. Visit CapitalOTBBet.com and sign up today. Welcome back to Racing Across America, live from Gulfstream Park, and we are happy to be joined now by the general manager here at Gulfstream, Bill Badgett. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Thanks Re for having me. Ready for the big weekend? We're ready, yes. Uh, I talked a little bit earlier because we were here and, and shot some footage and put, putting a piece together for Sunday. We were here Wednesday for the sale, and I believe it was the fifth, fifth annual, and yes. uh, it was obviously some fireworks, some seven-figure horses, a $3.65 million horse. We interviewed Bob Baffert here. Uh, I think you've got a nice little partnership and a great way to kick off the, the Florida Derby week with the two-year-old sale. Yeah, it's, uh, the timing's perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, Fazek Tipton's been a tremendous partner since the inauguration of the sale, and it you know it brings every everybody from the world that's interested in horse sales to the venue. So it's it's a it's a really popular event. Like I said, time wise, it's perfect. A few days before the Derby, everybody's here, so it's a. It's a lot of fun. It was nice, too, because I walked around the facility, and obviously being from the Saratoga area, we're familiar with the, the sale up there, and being a couple blocks from the track, there's a lot of locals that show up in the backyard and enjoy the sale, and it gives an extra buzz, and I walk, was walking around here uh, on Wednesday, and clearly the second floor, people were looking over the railing, and so you attract some, some folks maybe who wouldn't be familiar with sales like this, but they come, and when it's at a venue like a racetrack, it, it adds a little buzz to the whole scenario. Yeah, it's become a lot more popular year after year year after year and people actually look forward to it so you do get a lot of people from the community coming in and sit in the bleacher seats and kind of watch what's going on they get intrigued by it so it's a lot of fun for everybody and, and that then ties in also to uh i whenever i talk to you guys you or tim riffo i, I commend you on, on really the the stronic group vision for the entire facility here i had dinner just outside the paddock last night a little italian place right down here and there's some uh restaurants right around the paddock and and some shopping and and whatnot here and I think it plays in, I've said it again as I've talked to you guys, the past couple of years after the Florida Derby, I'm usually here doing a recap show, and so I don't get out until maybe a couple hours after the race is done. But you walk out, and there's still a buzz in the whole place because of the restaurants and whatnot. And I don't know whether it would work everywhere, location-wise, geographically, but, boy, it works down here, the whole facility you guys have built. Oh, it really does. And it's become a it's become a year-round facility, right? And it's... Uh Kind of like the place to be, even though after the Florida Derby, we continue with some, you know, some great racing throughout the year. We have a lot of people staying through the year, the Pletchers, the Pleasers, you know, some bigger outfits with a little more quality. It's the, so the year after year after year, the whole uh, tradition for the race is, is, is built up. And... Uh Talk a little bit about this weekend, obviously Florida Derby coming up, but, but we had just did the handicapper support. We kind of tipped our cap. You have three nice stakes coming up today, the Skipway, the Appleton, and the Orchid. 
And I think it just plays into you make it a, an entire weekend of folks are going to come down. As they say, if they show up a little early, you can catch the sale. But it kicks off uh, with a nice card today on Friday leading into the big day. Yeah, that's what we've been trying to make it more of a instead of just every Saturday, every Saturday, every Saturday, try to make it more of a, more of a weekend place. And, you know, try to even continue it after Sunday. And uh, if we're lucky enough to get the uh, the pick six carried over, we just got to get by today, squeak by today. It'll be a phenomenal day tomorrow with uh, everybody trying to hit the big the big dance there. Yeah, the, the, hopefully, no Boris Lowe uh, jumps in and exactly, and, and exactly. It. Just, uh, but I, I I think we're all anticipating uh, jumping in and playing uh, tomorrow with the uh, the carryover. We'll get to that in a moment. But before we do that, talk a little bit about this championship meet this year. Um, Classico del Caribe, I think, has been a, a nice way for you guys to kind of kick off the meet. That's become a really kind of splashy and, and fun day. And as the meet progressed, the Pegasus, I wrote down some notes here. Uh, this year it was City of Light and Accelerate in there. And then you toss in last year Gun Runner, a couple years ago California Chrome. The Pegasus has become a great place for one last chance to exactly. see horses before they go off to the shed. Uh, this year also the championship meet. We're coming down to the wire with the jockeys, Irod and Luis Saez, I think is going to be a lot of fun your yeah. impressions of, of this championship meet as it winds up oh it's been tremendous you know to uh you know start off with the claiming crown right into the caribbean classic and then look forward to the pegasus it's uh it's really becoming the place to be and then uh you know throughout the whole championship meet with the stake races and then building up to the florida derby with the holy bull fountain of youth florida derby it's become a tremendous prep race i mean if you think about it if you think about three of the last six horses winning the Kentucky Derby from the Florida Derby, it's it's yeah. a great prep. It's a great place for, to, to be here for the winter where you can really train your horses the whole entire winter without really kind of skipping a beat, missing a dance. And it's a, it's become a phenomenal uh, phenomenal meet. You know, you talk about being down here and training in the, in the nice weather. Certainly over the last few years, we've seen that happen with horses that maybe go north and, and get a prep and, and they'll come back because they know they're not going to miss any, any uh, training time down here, given the weather situation. Um, and, and it just plays into uh, the, the side issue of field size, because I think field size for you plays into not just training in the nice weather, but the training facilities down here. You have Palm Beach Downs. We were up at Palm Meadows yesterday. You have the, the stables out here. I think it gives you guys a horse population. I'm always amazed. Field size is, it's like uh, real estate is location, location, location. I think betting the horse race is, uh, from a better perspective, is field size, field size, field size, and you guys do a great job. Yeah, we, we really do. The race in the office, we have a tr phenomenal team here. It's small, but it's elite. Everybody that's in their positions does a, does a great job. The racing offices and, uh, you know, PJ with vice president of racing. And it's just uh, goes on and on and on. The list goes on and on. But it, it, like, like you're getting back to the field size, you do. You have the population here. So we're able to have Palm, Palm Meadows is probably one of the most beautiful yeah. training facilities in the United yeah. States, right? You got Gulfstream. You got, uh, we still have Gulfstream Park West with 450 horses. Then you got... Uh, you know Todd Pletcher at Delray, and you got Billy Mott and Kamat and Shug at uh, at uh, Pace and Park. So your population's there, and, and we all know. Listen, by the end of the day, field size is where the handle comes in. The handle comes into the purses for the horsemen. Gets it's a, it's a revolving ball that just keeps everything going. Yeah, and you guys have been doing a great job now uh, for a while, and that goes back to. I uh, also want to tip my cap to you because uh, I looked it up yesterday. Cause I remember when the the press release came out; it was notable. 2018 all sources handled a new record 1.75 billion dollars. Yeah, uh, you, you guys have to be very proud of what happened here last year. Oh, we are. We're extremely proud of it, and it's. Uh, you know, it's a work in progress, but you got to keep everything going. You know, we're up to 240 days a year of racing, year-round, tre tremendous training facility, and where else would you want, like to be? And that ties into what I also wanted to talk to you about. You mentioned the year-round racing. Uh, last year, as part of that billion, uh, 1.75 billion handle, $50 million increase for the 2018 summer meet, which is fairly, you know, relatively speaking, fairly new. Um, and I just read uh, earlier this month it was announced a $3.7 million summer stake schedule. Uh, some of the speed will be part of that. Talk a little bit about how the, the, the summertime has played into uh, Gulfstream over the past few years. Well, it's be, it's become very important, and like I said, we're, we we were able to uh, pull a pool of 
horsemen together to get notable, very notable names sticking down. Absolutely, here. and it's it's if that keeps your quality going throughout the summer, and then you you know you bring in the uh, the Florida Stallion Series, or some of the speed, and some races like that to keep us going. You know, till we get back to the fall, but it's uh, it's extremely important, and and the support from the horsemen is really important. But then. It all goes back to field size handle to where we're able to keep the purses up to be uh, competitive with everybody else in the United States. Yeah, Todd had the nice horse that I can't, the name is escaping me now, who uh, won down here last summer and then won that Breeders' Cup. Was it the two year old turf sprint? I think it was. He had the nice horse. But again, started him summertime down right, here at he Gulf came, Street. Yeah, he came here and, like, you know. Uh, you know, getting back to the, the Florida Derby, the preparations going into the Kentucky Derby, even the even further down the line, the Triple Crown races, right? So if you take 44 starters have won 59 Triple Crown races over the history of, yeah. of Florida, uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, no, it's definitely a, a key stop on the Derby Trail. Uh, we've alluded to it earlier, but I uh, have to reiterate, uh, $2.5 million in the pool as we uh, speak on Friday. That'll be up for grabs. But tomorrow, it's a mandatory. And uh, $2.5 million uh, on a big day like that. Have any estimates been made as to what you guys are expecting potentially for a handle tomorrow we're, on the rainbow? We're kind of hoping if we if, if we get it to tomorrow. Again, we're... Uh, we're as we're better hoping as we're minimum twelve million. How do you really? Yeah, uh, so that would be tremendous. It, yeah. It's a fun bet. You yeah. know, it's really a fun bet. It's it's really taken off down here, obviously, and uh, it gives the little guy and the big guy. It gives everybody a chance, especially when you're paying it out on one day. I, I say, you know, we do the handicapping show up in New York. Uh, a number of times a week, and I, I always say, at the 20 cent increment, you can put together a whale size ticket, and it's still a budget ticket. And when it gets up to that 500,000 or a million, at the console, you know, you put together a 60 dollar ticket, exactly. and the console pays six, eight hundred, or twelve hundred dollars. Exactly. That's a pretty good play, yeah, without a doubt. You know, and like I said, you know, I, I just personally, I just do quick picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty bucks in the machine, and maybe I hit the lottery. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll have to try a couple of those tomorrow, <laughs> see what, uh, what I can uh, manage there. But, again, it's uh, been a, a great meet here. And, uh, again, the weather was a little kooky yesterday. It was pouring, and then it be, the sun would come yeah, out. But I yeah. think you have picture-perfect weather coming up for today and tomorrow. I was watching the news before I uh, left my hotel room today. It looks like it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, I do. And, and since we uh, last year we were able to implement a new turf course, put some money into the facility, and uh, the thing – dries out really quick. That's why we're able to be on the turf today. Yeah, talk about the new turf course, because uh, what that opened up in the fall of, of uh, 2018? Yes, yes. We did it at, when we went to uh, Gulfstream Park West for the 60 days. We were able to pull everything out, put some new sod in, and redo the whole thing. And, it's, and longevity-wise, it's been a blessing in disguise. Yeah, it, uh, again, it, it looks great. And as you say, uh, uh, given the situation yesterday, it was a, fu it was a funny day, though, because as I say, the sun would then come out for a while, and it would pour and come out. But a uh, gorgeous day today, a little breeze as well. And so yeah. that helped dry things really out beautiful uh, day. nicely. So looking forward to, again, a big weekend. Uh, obviously, the Rainbow, uh, the Florida Derby. Uh, as as a, the GM, are you uh, eligible to have thoughts on the uh, Florida Derby? Uh, or do you have to say even? I just, I, I love the race. It's an extremely competitive race. We're happy with, a, you know, the horsemen supporting the race and the, and the right horses are in there to hopefully um, to move on to the next dance. I, I think it is a great, you know, hidden scroll. Will he bounce back? Maximum security started the career for 16,000 and comes out of, of a triple digit buyer. You have Shug in there with Code of Honor, uh, Harvey Wallbanger, both of those coming out of, of stakes earlier in the meet. So I think it's going to be a very, very intriguing edition of the Florida Derby. And Bill, we wish you and everybody down here lots of good luck uh, tomorrow. Obviously, as the championship meets wraps up. We've been following it right along. Got lots of great stakes action, and as always, lots of those great uh, maiden specials and allowance races that are going to play into important stakes later in the year. That's typical of the championship meet, has been so in the 2018-2019 meet. So again, appreciate your stopping by, and, and uh, while you're here, I'll, I will also th say thank you for the hospitality, because you guys always treat us nice. Uh, yeah, listen, we're, we're, we're pleased to have you guys. You do a great job, and you bring a lot to the table, and uh, we really appreciate it. Appreciate it uh, as well. Bill, uh, thank Thanks and again. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bill Badgett, GM here at Gulfstream Park. Big weekend coming up. Uh, that rainbow is going to be a lot of fun. Florida Derby, the uh, exclamation point on the meet. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, Mark Hennig, he has one of the entrants in the Florida Derby, Bourbon War. We'll talk that and more with Mark right after this. Stay tuned. 
It may be cold in the Northeast, but in South Florida, the action's hot. This winter, be part of the championship meet at Gulfstream Park, where the fields are deep and the payouts are big. With some of the most competitive turf racing in America, Gulfstream Park is your winter destination for the finest in championship thoroughbred horse racing. And if you're looking for the top jockeys and best trainers, you'll find them all at Gulfstream Park. So play it today. Gulfstream Park. Champions start here. Visit Rivers Casino and Resort, the Capital Region's only destination for live table game action and the hottest new slots paying out millions. And they're off. Horse betting is now at Rivers Casino and Resort with Capital Off-Track betting terminals and live tellers located just off the gaming floor at Van Slicks. Get in on all the action at Rivers Casino and Resort. In a recent study of some of the top online wagering sites, Capital OTB won big in total player rewards, far surpassing some of the best-known wagering sites in America. While other rewards programs simply offer you points redeemable for gift cards, Capital OTB's rebates are paid to you in actual cash. Plus, Capital OTB gives you full and immediate access to your money. So if all you're getting now are points and gift cards, join Capital OTB Player Rewards today and get cash back. Visit CapitalOTBBet.com and sign up today. Welcome back. Happy to be joined now by trainer Mark Hennig. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Seth. Pounced over. Uh, you're right on the backside here, right? I am, yeah. Fortunately, uh, we're here. We're all settled in, and our work's done, and now it's up to him. Is that beneficial to, to, to grab your works over the track? I feel like it is, you yeah. know. Um, I, I've been in both places. I've been. I've actually been at Pay I had horse at Payson oh, for really? years. I've had horse at Palmetto's for years, and uh, I think Gulfstream kind of suits us. Uh, let's jump right in and talk a little Bourbon War. Uh, we're going to have a replay of the Fountain of Youth. Code of Honor is going to win. Bourbon Honor, Bourbon War, uh, the number four horse. Code of Honor is number one. Bourbon War, the number four. Uh, this nice second place finish uh, generated a lot of buzz from folks. Still fairly lightly raced. This was only career start number four. The nice second place finish in the Fountain of Youth. What was your takeaway from that race? I was really pleased with it. I mean, I, I thought his rally there in the stretch, especially the way he lowered his head and was running the last... 70 yards, I thought, you know, showed a, 
showed that he was, uh, you know, certainly not at the end of his game, you know. So, uh, you know, going forward, stretching out and continuing to stretch out, it gives you it gives you confidence. Yeah, and this is a little bit of a stretch out, another 16th of a mile, uh, obviously, at a mile and an eighth. And uh, the next move, obviously, the mile and a quarter, the derby, you anticipating, as you say, with the distance, a mile and eighth, and maybe then on to a mile and a quarter. Well, let's right hope. The, yeah, let's yeah. hope. But right now, <laughs> yeah. we're just focused on this mile and eight. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Pace scenario, a lot of folks are obviously looking at the Fountain of Youth, and there was a hot pace there. Um, that played into his style, but folks are thinking pace-wise may play into his style again. What are you anticipating pace-wise on Saturday? I, I think it looks like it should get some pace, but you never know. And I, I think, uh, you know, this horse is, is pretty, you know, pretty versatile. I mean, I think, uh, you know, in the allowance race, they weren't going as fast, and he was probably only three or four or five lengths out of it at the most. So if they slow it down, he's going to be closer to him. So uh, he's not like a, a horse that always is going to drop back to last and make a run. I think uh, circumstances kind of got him a little later making his run last time because we, you know, Irad said there were a couple of horses that were plummeting through the field and he was just yeah. kind of trying to avoid them. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, if, if the pace is lively, he's probably going to be in the same spot. And if it's, if it's a little slower, he'll be a little closer. Give us uh, your thoughts. How's he working into the race and what are your expectations? For he's Saturday? done well, you know, Seth, you, you go from like he was six weeks between races in his, in, from the Remsen to the allowance race and six weeks from the allowance race to the final youth. And then, you know, we came coming back now and, 28 days or whatever it is and uh, I think the main thing that we've been trying to do is juggle that keeping him uh, fresh happy and you know also maintain the fitness I think that last race with what we've done with him in between we've had some nice strong gallops and I think we're we're in a good spot we haven't squeezed the lemon yet points wise where are you guys you uh Wait, the, the second in the Fountain Youth was at 20? We've got 21, 21 because he got a point in the Remsen. Remsen, okay. So, which uh, might come in handy yeah. somewhere down the road. <laughs> uh, so uh, points, uh, you're, you're right there as it is points-wise. And, again, uh, a lot of buzz coming out of that second-place finish. A lot of folks thinking uh, Bourbon War is going to be very interesting. We wish you a lot of luck there. Also want to catch up on uh, some other runners. You had a nice uh, allowance optional claiming win. Uh, earlier in the meet, just a, a few weeks ago, March 6th, uh, Cipriana on the uh, comeback. Hadn't been seen since Saratoga, but the comeback win uh, was pretty nice for that one. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, Cipriana is going to be the number four horse. And again, this was off a, a layoff since Saratoga. She broke the maiden in her debut here last year, but this was a pretty good looking win uh, in the four year old debut from Cipriana. Is she an improved four year old? Well, we, she was a she was had a lot of talent as a three year old. Yeah. I mean, we were we we were expecting big things from her. What happened was she she ran that first time she won. We ran her back here in an allowance race. Um, and she got uh, she got really stirred up in the paddock, and when she got on the track, she didn't do well in the post parade, and and she when she got to the gate, she actually flipped in the gate and landed on the doors. Um, they backed her out and put her back in and ran her. I, I, obviously, I wish they would have scratched her that day, but uh, you know when she didn't run well, she she was like middle of the pack, but it mentally it really unwound her, and uh, you know then we twice at uh, Saratoga she kind of bolted on the turn so the one race she came back in and and still finished mid-pack after bolting on the turn but she just wasn't right and and we we did some a bone scan on her did a workup and it turned out that she had some some area in the in the spine where she must have the day she flipped she hit her withers and on the on the back doors of the of the gate and uh, and so we we gave her some time for that and she's come back real strong yeah, I never really thought about that. You hear about those situations where horses maybe have a bad experience at the gate and then it, they, they become a little bit skittish, but I never thought about that. you got to the physical side. you got to work a little psychology too sometimes yeah, with yeah. these horses. And, For and sure. in a situation like that, what do you just repetition, bring them to the gate and whatnot, and they're like, oh, it's yeah, okay. I mean, she, you're, you're, she's the main thing with her, you know, she was training well last year when we were at Saratoga, and, then, and when we worked her in the morning, she wasn't doing anything wrong, but I think in hindsight, she was feeling just yeah. enough, you know, and, and in the afternoons, they don't have as thick a saddle pad as we do in the mornings. I think she was feeling that, that, that back when, when the jock got on her. But again, she looked pretty good uh, on the comeback event. Any plans for her coming up? Yeah, we may run her, uh, you know, there's a couple spots. She could go up to New York and run, or, or we could run down here. Um, 
but we'll, we'll probably look for another race for her before too long. Uh, and I also, again, just pulling up uh, some of your stats on Equibase, I saw the very speedy, talented Strike Power back on the work tab. We're going to pull up the Swale from last year, uh, and Strike Power uh, won the Swale. He'll be the uh, number six horse here, ran second. Uh, in the uh, fountain of youth, and as they say, a nice steady string of workouts back on the work tab. What's up next for Strike Power? Well, he's got an allowance condition, you know, if we decide to use it. He's uh, he's training real well. He actually breezed here this morning in a minute flat. Uh, so did my Miss Lily, who's going to go to New York for the top flight in her next start. Um, she's going to breeze down here probably next Friday and then ship uh, up for the top flight. So, uh he went in a minute this morning, strike power. He's doing tremendous. That was his second 5.8. So he's he's a big, heavy horse. So, you know, um, he's going to take a couple more breezes or so, but but he's coming along nicely. Uh, so maybe look for him up in New York? Uh, probably, yeah, okay. most likely. Uh, and just before we let you go, uh, just some nuts and bolts. Uh, we were up at Palm Meadows yesterday. It was funny. As we drove out, there was a line of horse vans. It's that time of year. Give us the... the uh, the logistics. How, how do you how do you move from one venue to the other and get your horses? And what's the planning involved and whatnot? Well, the planning, you know, like in our case, uh, this this race Saturday is going to dictate a lot of what we have, the yeah. timing of what we're going to do. So we're kind of been stuck in limbo a little bit, making serious plans. We have a van leaving Sunday for for Belmont, so we'll get a, our first load back up there uh, by Monday morning. Um, but, you know, the, the plane's going that way. The, there's vans going that way. It, it gets a little busy this time of year trying to get a van. But uh, <laughs> but everybody uh, everybody will be in their new spot. It's, it's quite an amazing uh, thing, really, the racetrack and how we, you know, load up not only our families but our, you know, all of our pets and all of our <laughs> employees. It's like having, you know, 25 kids and <laughs> 30 pets, you know, when you leave Florida. So, uh, but, but family, you look up, that bus. you look up 24 hours later and everything's yeah. set up in the new town. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again, uh, it's that time of year where everybody's going to make the move North, but, uh, lots of folks uh, stay down here with uh, some of a string at uh, Gulfstream as well as the, the summertime. We talked with Bill Badgett live down here, but things are moving North certainly. And speaking of moving North, I have talked to uh, trainers and we've had some taped interviews earlier where I've gotten opinions and you being a New York guy and at Saratoga during the season, I've been asking people the past couple of days because people have asked me the last two months, what are your thoughts as a trainer on the new Saratoga dates? Um, a little bit of longer meet, same number of days, but no Mondays and Tuesdays. I, when people ask me, I've said it, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not really uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. I mean, I, I, I see positives. Uh, I, I'm just not sure how it's going to work out, but I think the chances uh, folks will like it. But from a trainer's perspective, your thoughts on the new schedule at Saratoga? Well, I mean, I, I, I think the two days off is a great thing for, for you know, because it, it just, that meat can wear on yeah. on us that are actually, you know, we're, we're kind of, you want to, the owners want to socialize at night and you want to socialize with them, but then we're getting up early. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know can, how that it, works. And then the sales, the, having the, you know, the sales there in the, on the dark days, you know, we're constantly, you, you have such a little bit of free time. The two days off a week or two afternoons, you know, is, is a great thing. I think it'll help replenish our help, keep them, keep them a little fresher um, and ourselves. But, uh, you know, I've, obviously we have a nice home in Long Island. I, I wish the meat was, yeah. I'd like it to be five weeks, you know, yeah. so uh, it, it's uh, it's probably I think I think at least the fact that they're doing it the way they're doing it is a good idea. Yeah, as they say, the same number of days. As again, people have asked me, and I'm kind of same number of days. So, um, and I think the extra. Uh, I said just what you said. I think the two days off will give people a little time to decompress a little bit. And, yeah, and absolutely. And the, and the, like I said, the sales are tough. And yeah. if you've got if your horses are split between. Uh, yeah. Saratoga and Belmont, you, a you know, to... you, you go, if you go down there on one dark yeah. day, the, you basically don't have an yeah. afternoon off a, a, all week. Be very interesting to see, but as I say, I think it'll work out, but we'll see. All right, uh, looks like time to wrap things up, but Mark, before we let you go again, uh, uh, good luck uh, tomorrow with Bourbon War in the Florida Derby and going forward as well. Uh, Cipriana, Strike Power, Miss Lily uh, also in the uh, future. Thank you, Seth. And just hang here for a second as I wrap up because, again, we are up against the clock.
for this edition of Racing Across America. Thanks to Mark Hennig, Bill Badgett, and uh, everybody we uh, talked to up at Palmetto's with the taped interviews. More of that coming up tomorrow as well. Don't forget programming note. Things will kick off at 8 a.m. tomorrow with the Handicapper Support. I'll be back here with Racing Across America at 8.30 live from Gulfstream Park. Thanks to our friends at Gulfstream for their sponsorship. Gulfstream Park champions start here. All right, we're going to wrap things up, but uh, nice day of racing ahead. Three stakes races on the card down here at Gulfstream today. $2.5 in the Rainbow Six pool. So take your shots. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You're watching OTB TV, a service of Capital Off-Track Betting.